Bro, do you see like the chase and malice argument? Let's let's talk about that. Do you guys see the chase and malice argument yesterday? I retweeted part of it. I just woke up. All right, I didn't even wake up. Actually, I was just up. I was randomly at the gym and I saw this. So this all stems from from this this original tweet, which is Freak, in his most recent patch rundown, he was talking about unintuitively high mastery champions and unintuitively low mastery champions. So the difference, so what he's saying here essentially is that people think that like Udyr, Singed, Ivor, and Shaco are like brain dead easy and everyone can play them. And they think that they're like super low skill champions. Like they just have like not a very low skill ceiling, right? And people perceive champions like Ezreal to be extremely hard because there's a lot of skill shots. Like Kaiser's another champion where like, I mean, you go in, you look cool. You have your ult, you have different, like you have a skill shot again. Um, the way you play around your passive, they assume that these champions are hard. And what he's trying to say here, this is like data-driven stuff from, from Freak, um, is that actually champions like Udyr, Shaco, Ivor, and Singed are harder to master. And they're actually harder to like pick up than a champion like Ezreal and Kai'Sa. And I, I actually believe this to be true. I mean, this is stats driven by him. I don't think he's just saying it for no reason. The way you should think about it is this. If you take your average jungler, you take your average jungler in Challenger who hasn't played Udyr before, right? And he, let's say he just plays whatever's meta. He plays Brand, Zyra, uh, Sejuani, Maokai, whatever, right? He plays these types of champs. And then he starts playing Udyr. It will take him... A, a higher amount of games to get to the point where he is playing Udyr at like a proficient level compared to if somebody is good on other AD carries, let's say somebody is good on Jin and like, uh, like MF, Ash, whatever. And then they start playing Ezreal. And the reason is because Ezreal, like you can understand how you're supposed to be playing Ezreal. Even if you're bad at it initially, even if you're bad with skill shots initially, you understand what your E does. Like, you know that you're like, you'll figure out in a couple games that your W gets proc by your E. Like you understand the, the attack speed passive, like, you understand you should be trying to hit your cues. You understand to ult waves and like ult people like long range. The kit is more intuitive than a, than a kit like Udyr. Like Udyr's kit, you have to understand what ulti to use in every situation. You have to be able to like read the fight, know your damage and understand like how you should be playing it with your multiple different ultis. There's, and it's a lot less intuitive because there's times where like Udyr, because of the way that your passive resets with auto attacks, you need to like fight situations out in order to get another ulti proc um and you just have to like make these types of decisions which just aren't intuitive maybe once you pl start playing at the highest level obviously like if you took like the like an ai that played ezreal like an ai playing ezreal would like like would have so, like a champion like ezreal would have a a a higher skill ceiling than a champion like udir like if you took two ais and you had them play against each other like ezreal would just like always win at a point um because if you play ezreal perfectly it, it would just be like the most op champion in the game but the what he's trying to make the point of is that like people view these champions as brain dead where they're actually not brain dead. Like other champions are far more, more brain dead. A champion like Maokai is far more brain dead than a champion like Udyr. You know, like a champion like Zyra, people think Zyra would have some element of skill because it's squishy, whatever. Zyra is very easy to play. When Zyra was OP, when people picked it up in the jungle, it's like everyone could play it a couple games and then they're like proficient at it completely. It's very easy to understand how you're going to use the abilities when to use your CC ability, when to use your damage, like when to ult when they come into you, like all this type of stuff is is very obvious. And yes, there is like some level of skill. It's not like there's no skill at all, but everyone knows what you're going to do. Whereas like the champions that he listed here play differently in different situations and they actually take a lot of games to master, right? So they started arguing with this. Me when I have opinions on something I've never attempted or have any knowledge of. Ha, huh, the champ does the exact same thing every game and just limit tests getting punished for shit invades. Udyr is brain rot. I mean, I think that Udyr players like can play Udyr poorly, but I also just think that Udyr counters Shaco. So I feel like Chase probably just hates playing against Udyr because Udyr just counters Shaco. You can just never kill an Udyr with Shaco. So Udyr can play as disrespectfully as possible into a champion like Shaco. When you play other matchups, it's a lot harder to play. When you're playing like Udyr versus Lilia, this is a much harder matchup to play. Um, when you play versus Kindred, when you play versus Graves, it's a lot harder for the for um, Uder to play these types of matchups. So it's like, I think a lot of it comes from this. What does that have to do with skill ceiling? His floor and ceiling might as well be the same. Only existent skill expression is spacing his mobile and Ivio. So I was just like, I didn't even see this. Um, but anyways, from here, 
Uh, very clear to me that you've never played him. He is one of the highest skill ceilings in the game. But clearly, as a Shaco uh, One Trick Pony who never played him, anything but NA solo queue would know that. Okay, so they started arguing. Wait, where was it? Then Chase said this, right? He said, Uter has one of the highest skill ceilings in the game. He laughed at like malice for, for typing this. Then they started getting into it. Uh, Chase, I like you, but malice clears both jungles and um, and you as a jungler. So then from here, wait, can I see post engagements? I want to see the quotes. Here we go. Malice said this. So they started arguing about this. Let me explain what the dense NA... Shaco OTP can't fathom. You have four different ults that are based on the last skill you choose. You chose, similar to LeBlanc are, except it constantly goes down by your two first autos from each form. You have to track it and play fights accordingly. It sounds brain dead. It's at, like, just go play some Moodier. It actually is not that easy. You're it, At first, you're going to int, and then you'll learn it, which is the whole point that Freak was trying to make. I don't think it's the highest skill ceiling in the game. I don't agree with that from Malice, but I think it's just... It's deceptively high skill ceiling. It's like upper mid skill ceiling, I would say. It's higher than a lot of champions that people would perceive to be strong, like uh, harder to play. Like, for example, it's much easier to play Kha'Zix, like significantly easier to play Kha'Zix than it is to play Udyr, right? Like that's one that people just see Kha'Zix, they see him invisible, they see him jump in for an assassination. You're like, oh my God, this guy is so good. It's like, no, he's not good. Like it's very easy to play Kha'Zix, very easy to know what to do. So this is where I got brought in. So the reason I brought this up or I even tweeted about this. Like, I didn't give a fuck about these guys arguing. But then, this is uh, what they said. How come no professional top laner can pilot him for shit then? Dom one lane with Uter top against Viper, like convincingly. Once again, what does that have to do with skill ceiling? And what are you not understanding? Okay, so like, I, I also want to contextualize this. I feel like it's like kind of disrespectful to be like, oh, like if Dom one lane against Viper, it's like, okay, number one, like put my career against Viper's career. Like I was... I was a better pro player than Viper, all right? Like, so I'm, I'm pretty good at playing under pressure. But also, it's like, whenever I play, I can get Challenger. The only reason I'm not Challenger is because I don't play that much right now. After that, I hit Challenger playing Udyr. So, like, I'm a Challenger level Udyr player if I ever play enough games to actually get there. And then also, it's like, the, like, Viper just didn't know what Udyr does. Once again, what does that have to do with skill ceiling? What are you not understanding? You think Dom is going to win lane? Playing Uder into Viper and Crimson suboptimally. He wasn't playing perfectly, but he simply had to have been near uh, near it, I think is what he was trying to say. I just think that Crimson and Viper, like no one was playing Uder top at the time. This was before everyone started playing it in spring and I effectively just cheesed them. Like I play the champion pretty well. I'm challenger level Uder player. And like, especially at that time when I, when I started playing, I'm playing at a challenger level. And these guys had just like just didn't know what Udyr really did. Like they had no idea of the limits, like when I could trade, what I couldn't trade, like what they needed to build. Um, they had different approaches. There was times where they were like taking first strike, first strike, and trying to scale. There's times where they're like all in early levels, and I'm just like winning the game at like level one because they're they're over trading because I'm ult at level one and they don't. Like there was just all these moments where they just didn't understand the champion. And then like I'm sure like Crimson is playing competitive right now. If we played more. And they fully understood my champion, which they would in like maybe like 10, 20 games, whatever. If they were able to fully understand my champion or they started playing it themselves, they'd be able to use the fact that they are better top laners than me to beat me. But the reason why I was outperforming them at those times was because they just didn't know what my champion actually worked. The legit first three months of pro play, being picked up in pro play, uh, was Dom flaming every single uh player for not playing the champion properly over half the tops dropped him and so after solo losing games individually legit tune in any to any of his old videos from these games and you'll hear it correct so if dom is playing it well it cannot have that high of a ceiling i mean i think it can have a high ceiling it's just like that's where i invested my time it's not like i've like equally invested my time into all junglers or all like champions in recent years when i don't play the game that much what i do is i play champions generally that are like kind of new that's like what i do with my time that's how i enjoy the game so when Udyr was reworked in 2022, became a completely different champion. It's essentially just a new champion. N no real correlation to the old Udyr. So I put a lot of time into that champion and other people just haven't put time into that champion. Like I probably have, I don't know. I mean, I probably have close to a thousand games of the champion. Whereas like the people playing it probably had 50, 75, something like this. And 
because of that, there's a lot of things that they just didn't know about the champion that I did. And that's why I was able to perform with it. And that's why I was criticizing their Udyr plays because they just didn't have the games. They didn't know how it worked. So I don't know, bro. Loki disrespect, but it's fine. I just, I tweeted out, what was my tweet? My tweet was this. I just said, I don't know what these guys are arguing about, but I'm simply just the GOAT, which is why I won lane uh, versus challenger players. Hope this helps. That's what I tweeted, bro. F it. That was the resolution. But there's there's all my takes on the situation. I don't know why I was randomly brought up into some fucking drama, but I mean, what's weird is like when I did my challenger climb, <laughs> like Chase, I don't know. I feel like Chase should know I'm a good player, like whenever I play. Like in the, in the Dantos tournament, I played versus consistent challenger players off roll, and I was like, match, like it wasn't just on Uter, right? Like they started banning Uter. I played Redacted, I played Rumble. Like I feel like if I put time into the game, like I just, it's not like just because I don't play a lot. All that means is that like, there's a time where I have to de-rust when I start playing. That's all, that's all that means. I still follow the game closely. Like I watch the game all day. I know what's good. I know what's not good. I think about the game frequently. So like generally for me, it's just like I need to spend some time de-rusting and then I just climb pretty hard. And then if we play like streamer tournaments and stuff like that, I mean, I, I like literally always perform in them. It's not like I'm like, I don't, people just think that because I'm like old, I'm just like a terrible player. I think that like the thing is, if you're still watching a lot of league, you still have like your league brain turned off. So it's not the same as just like if I did no nothing league related for six months, you know, like I'm always watching the game and then I'm I'm just thinking about like, oh, OK, this is what this jungler did here. Like, is that is that good? Oh, that's good. And then if I like recognize that it's good, I can implement it into my own play. It's just about having like all the other parts of league like, when you play league a lot, like just good mini map awareness like good understanding of like different lane matchups like just getting your mechanics back up to to par like that's all that's all it is really